Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about angles and angle measures. An angle is formed by rotating a ray through its endpoint called the vertex. The starting position of the ray is called the initial side of the angle while its ending position is called the terminal side. Positive angles are being formed when the rotation of the terminal side is counterclockwise. On the other hand, negative angles are being formed when the rotation of the terminal side is clockwise. In a coordinate system, an angle is said to be in standard position if its initial side lies along the positive x-axis and its vertex is at the origin. It is important to note that one revolution is equivalent to 360 degrees. Hence, from the figure of angle in standard form, notice that one revolution was divided into four quadrants. Moreover, if the terminal side is not yet moving, then the angle is equivalent to zero degrees. When the terminal side coincides with the positive y-axis, then it generates an angle which measures 90 degrees. Furthermore, if the terminal side coincides with the negative side of the x-axis, then the angle being generated measures 180 degrees. Additionally, if the terminal side coincides with the negative y-axis, then the angle being generated measures 270 degrees. And when the terminal side coincides with the initial side, then it completes one revolution which is equivalent to 360 degrees. Therefore, Angles in standard position may fall in one of the quadrants as follows. If the measurement of the angle is between 0 degree to 90 degrees, then it falls in quadrant 1. If the angle measures between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, then it lies in quadrant 2. If the measurement of the angle is between 180 degrees to 270 degrees, then it lies in quadrant 3. Lastly, if the measurement of the angle is between 270 degrees to 360 degrees, then it lies in quadrant 4. On the other hand, if the rotation of the terminal side is in clockwise direction, then it generates negative angles. Therefore, if the measurement of the angle is between negative 360 degrees up to negative 270 degrees, then it lies in quadrant 1. If the angle being generated measures between negative 270 degrees to negative 180 degrees, then it lies in quadrant 2. If the angle being generated is between negative 180 degrees up to negative 90 degrees, then it lies in quadrant 3. And finally, if the measurement of the angle is between negative 90 degrees to 0 degree, then it lies in quadrant 4. Let us consider the following examples. Determine the quadrant of each angle. For the first one, we have 194 degrees. Notice that the measurement 194 degrees is actually greater than 180 degrees but less than 270 degrees. If we're going to draw this given angle in standard position, then notice that it is actually greater than 180 degrees. Therefore, we will go beyond 180 degrees but we will not reach 270 degrees. Therefore, from the illustration, we can see that 194 degrees lies in the third quadrant. 
For the second one, we have 1095 degrees. Notice that 1095 degrees is actually greater than 1 revolution. Therefore, if we're going to draw this angle in standard position, remember that 1 revolution is equivalent to 360 degrees. From this point up to this point, we have generated 360 degrees. But remember that we need 1095 degrees. So therefore, we can rotate another one whole revolution since we have now two revolutions, meaning we now have 720 degrees. Moreover, if we will rotate another one revolution which makes three revolutions, then this is already equal to 1080 degrees. Since we have 1095 degrees here, we have left 15 degrees. So therefore, this is the illustration of 1095 degrees in standard position. From here, we can see that the angle 1095 degrees lies in the first quadrant. Moreover, for the third given, we have negative 230 degrees. Since the given angle is negative, therefore, the rotation of our terminal side should be in clockwise direction. Since the rotation of our terminal side is in clockwise direction, then from this point up to this point, we have negative 90 degrees. Up to this point, we have negative 180 degrees and since we have negative 230 degrees then we need to move another 50 degrees therefore this is the illustration of the angle that measures negative 230 degrees from this illustration it is very clear that the given angle lies in the second quadrant Finally, for the last one, we have negative 910 degrees. Again, looking at the given, we can see that it is greater than 1 revolution. Therefore, we will go beyond 360 degrees. And since the given measure is negative, then it follows that the rotation is in clockwise direction. From this point up to this point, we have generated negative 360 degrees. Another revolution, we have negative 720 degrees. But since we have negative 910 degrees, from negative 720 degrees, we still need 190 degrees. So from this point up to this point, we have added 180 degrees. And we need to go another 10 degrees more. So therefore, this is the illustration of negative 910 degrees. It is very clear that the negative 910 degree angle is in quadrant 2. Another commonly used unit of angle is the radian. One radian or one rad or simply one is the measure of the central angle of a circle whose subtended arc is equal to the length of the radius. In this illustration, we can see that the central angle here is being subtended by an arc and by two radii. Therefore, the measurement of this central angle is in radian. Note that if an angle measure is not followed by any symbol, then, the angle is said to be in terms of radians. Now, let us discuss on how to convert angles in degree to radian and vice versa. From the definition earlier, we derived that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi. Or, when simplified, 180 degrees is equal to pi. Thus, we will have the following. To convert an angle measure from degree to radian, we need to multiply the degree measure by pi over 180 degrees. Moreover, 
To convert an angle measure from radian to degree, we need to multiply the radian measure by 180 degrees over pi. Let us consider the following examples. Convert the following angle measures into degrees. Since there is no symbol for the following angle measurement, then it only means that these angles are in radian measure. So converting them into degrees, we will be multiplying the given by 180 degrees over pi. So we're gonna have pi times 180 degrees is equal to 180 degrees pi all over 4 times pi is equal to 4 pi. Since we have a common factor pi, then we can actually cancel out pi, giving us with 180 degrees divided by 4. Simplifying 180 degrees divided by 4, we're gonna have 45 degrees. Therefore, pi over 4 is equal to 45 degrees. Let us try doing the second one. So we have negative 2 pi over 3. So multiply the given by 180 degrees all over pi. So we will have 2 pi times 180 degrees is equal to 360 pi. All over 3 times pi is equal to 3 pi. Do not forget the negative sign. So we're going to have here negative. So since pi is again a common factor, then we can cancel out pi. Then we will have negative 360 degrees divided by 3. Simplifying this, we're going to have negative 120 degrees. So therefore, negative 2 pi over 3 radian is equal to negative 120 degrees. Finally, for the third one, again, let us multiply the given by 180 degrees all over pi. So, when we simplify, we will have 3 pi times 180 degrees is equal to 540 degrees pi all over 7 times pi is equal to 7 pi. Cancel out pi. So, we will have negative 540 degrees over 7, which is equal to negative 77.14 degrees. Therefore, negative 3 pi over 7 is equal to negative 77.14 degrees. Tip, if you want a shorter solution, you can always remember that pi is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, you can simply substitute 180 degrees to pi. For example, if you were given 3 pi over 4, when you convert this into degrees, then simply change pi into 180 degrees. So we're gonna have 3 times 180 degrees divided by 4. So when we simplify, we will have 180 divided by 4, this is equal to 45 degrees. So therefore, 3 times 45 degrees is equal to 135 degrees. Therefore, 3 pi over 4 is equal to 135 degrees. Moving on, convert the following angle measures into radians. For the first one, we have 210 degrees. So, in converting degree measure to radian, we need to multiply the given by pi over 180 degrees. So, here, we're gonna have 210 degrees times pi, we have 210 pi, all over 180. Next thing to do is to lowest term, 210 all over 180. Since both numbers are divisible by 30, then the lowest term would be 7 pi all over 3. Therefore, 210 degrees is equal to 7 pi over 3 radian. Let us move to the next one. 
we have negative 320 degrees. So again, multiply the given by pi over 180 degrees. So we're going to have negative 320 pi all over 180. Then next, lowest term 320 over 180. Notice that both numbers are divisible by 20. Therefore, the final answer would be negative 16 pi all over 9. Finally, for the last one, we have 47 degrees. So, multiply this by pi over 180 degrees. So, we're gonna have 47 pi all over 180. However, since there is no common factor between 47 and 180, this is already the final answer or the radian measure of the given 47 degrees. Tip for a shorter solution, what you can do is to divide the given degree measure in 180, then affix a pi symbol on the lowest term. For example, converting 45 degrees into radian measure, then simply divide 45 degrees by 180 degrees. When you lowest term this, you're gonna have 1 over 4. Then affix a pi symbol on the numerator. So 1 times pi is simply pi. Therefore, 45 degrees in radian measure can be written as pi all over 4. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For the next video, we will discuss about coterminal and reference angles. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next discussion.